Good morning, Connections. Friday, June 26, 2020. So glad you're here once again. Looking forward to a, a fantastic weekend. Got uh, several reservations in, so our seating is set for Sunday. If you have not made a reservation, you will be making a reservation for the following Sunday. But fear not, we will be broadcasting as usual from the sanctuary on Sunday at 10 o'clock. So um, whether you can uh, be with us in person or be with us via technology, uh, we look forward to seeing everyone on Sunday at 10 o'clock. Let's get started. So we're in the earliest stages of this, but I want you to start considering how you would like to participate in ministry at Connections Church. So met with our uh, with several of our leaders yesterday to talk about uh, forming small group ministries. These ministries will be based on uh, our desire to develop better relationships with one another. Uh, in a smaller uh, group format. Uh, there would be classroom teachings and, and things along those lines um, in a more relaxed atmosphere, but nevertheless, so that we're all studying uh, similar or same material uh, in these small groups. But there's also a ministry component beyond just meeting together and learning and doing Bible study. Um, these small groups would be designed to birth our new ministries. So we are looking for people who have specific ministries on their heart and how to get those started. And so not only are we learning about God's word, but we are finding ways to apply God's word. We're that at in evangelism, uh, spoke a lot about uh, doing our outreach components of hospital visitation, or uh, people who are homebound. Uh, we also spoke yesterday about uh, peer counseling for those who are struggling with addiction. Um, another one that came up was helping people transition from incarceration. Uh, that would probably start as a jail ministry here in uh, Leon County. And then that would be uh, focused on building relationship while people are still incarcerated, and then developing a program that would allow them to transition out and um, keep the progress that they had made while they were incarcerated. So um, several great ideas. If any of those or other ideas um, are, are things that you're interested in, please let me know. I'll post my uh, email address at the end of the message today. You can also reach out to Dave uh, and his crew um, and share your thoughts with them as well. But earliest stages, this is not something that we are going to do tomorrow. This is something that we're looking to do once we are in a, the new facility and once we are past the, the dangers of COVID-19. Um, but it is not too soon to start looking and planning on how we're going to use our new facility and how we're going to get you involved. So stay tuned and you have any questions or any interest, just let me know. All right, finishing out our week strong with another uh, look at the Sermon on the Mount. If you recall, we started uh, with Jesus kind of shaking everyone awake by reminding us of um, that if we think we are perfect, think again, that we have a long way to go before we are uh, uh, at, at the level that God is. His holiness is uh, beyond measure, and our holiness is certainly much less. And that came um, as we looked at how we treat our neighbors, but more importantly, how we treat our enemies. And then from there, we looked at um, our, the, our motivations, our heart condition, and learning to give God access to our hearts so that 
He can root out the things that are, are not of the proper motive. Why, why are we going to him in prayer? Are we going to him in prayer so that we look holy? Why are we fasting so we look uh, like we uh, are deeply religious? Why do we, we uh, give? Is it because we want people to see our giving? We want to glorify ourselves. So those are the things that we've been talking about this week. And we want to end the week on um, our, our perceptions and things that consume our thoughts. Things that, that draw our attention away from our relationship with God and down the paths that lead to, to worldliness. So that's where we're going to end our week and very familiar passages found in Matthew 6, 19 through 25. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we began our study uh, of the Sermon on the Mount with the Beatitudes. And we perhaps were surprised to see the things that we consider blessings, great wealth and power, God considers a curse. And what we consider a curse of, of humility and not access to, to many resources and uh, having to, to scratch and cloth out an existence, that many of those are who God considers blessed. So it should not surprise us that Jesus is using our, our lens on how we perceive the world to draw us back to the kingdom, draw us back to keeping our eyes on, on our eternal destination and away from the focus of where the world draws our attention. It is well known that the, church, the, the world's philosophy is the one with the, the most toys at the end of their life wins. But that's not what God is sharing for that whole pile of toys is going to rot and have no value at all but the kindness you share the love and compassion you share the the encouraging words that you share the the faith that you demonstrate in times of trouble those are the treasures that god is looking to grow through your life and demonstrate to others. And those are the things that will last in this lifetime and for eternity. So where are our thoughts today? Are our thoughts on if I just had a few dollars more, my life would, would all work out? Or are our thoughts to what can I do for you today, Lord? How can I be the light in this dark world? How can I be a difference maker? How can I encourage my neighbor? How can, can I share my faith with others? For if we are consumed by thoughts of, of grabbing more and more toys, then we lose our focus on serving others and glorifying God. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Perception can have two people in very similar circumstances. One is full of joy and laughter, kindness, 
grace, mercy, exudes everything that is God. You have the other that is bitter, angry, perceives everyone as their enemy, never has a kind word to share, always looking for a way to get over on their neighbor. Two people in very similar circumstances with very different eyes, very different perceptions. And that's what Jesus is challenging the crowd as they listen to his sermon. How do you perceive the world? And if you perceive the world as, see the world as God sees the world, then it's full of potential. And everyone that you see is a potential brother or sister in Christ. It's the challenge for today. Lord, help us see the world as you see it. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Not only our desire and in, in, in focus on toys and, and things and, and accumulation of, of wealth, but we feel those things will protect us and keep us safe and, and, and squelch the, the worry and anxiety in our life. But the core thrust of this passage is we often try to walk in both worlds. We often try to hedge our bets. We are wanting to be devoted to God, but if this God thing doesn't work out, I need a, fault, I need a backup plan. Or the reverse, I am all in to accumulating everything that I can accumulate in this world. This is the only life I've got. I have to make the most of it. I want to leave a mark on this world. But those Christians, they might have a point. So I'll hedge my bet that direction. I'll go to church on Sunday and I'll donate some of my time to, to paint in the church when the church needs paint. Right? Yet, God, from the very beginning, says, I'm a jealous God. You can't have more than one God in your life. You can't make wealth your God and expect that you're going to still have a relationship with me. Choose. Choose me, choose the world. But you can't serve us both. I can tell you from experience that when you put yourself in the hands of God and you, you make your, your life centered around him, that the stresses and strains from all of the things that cause us to be anxious, no matter how, man, how much wealth we have, no matter how many toys we have, the anxiety level never seems to decrease. People with great wealth fear losing their wealth, losing their power, losing their celebrity. And boy, does this world love to tear down its celebrities. So today, consider laying your treasures up in heaven, sowing more kindness into this world, more encouragement, 
as you perceive the world as God perceives the world, your light will brighten and more will become aware of the greatness of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are so patient with us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to extend mercy and grace, even though we are often distracted by the things of this world. We want what our neighbors have. We want what's displayed on the TV as a satisfying life. When all the time you were there with open arms. Forgive us, Lord. Challenge us today, Lord, to seek you first. To continue to find ways to lay more and more treasures up in heaven. Joy and peace are real, but they are not found in the world. They are found in your embrace. Draw us nearer to you today, Lord. Draw us out of the noise and chaos of this world and into the peace that you offer freely. We submit to you today, Lord. We are grateful, Lord, for all that you've done. And if you do not do another thing for us, Lord, the gift of salvation is more than enough. But we know that you are gracious and you desire to give amazing gifts. Help us to have the eyes to receive them, Lord. Help us to have your eyes so that we can perceive the world as you intended us to perceive it. And not through the darkness that overcomes us in the world. We continue to pray for the end of COVID-19 and for all of those who have been affected by it, whether it's financially or, or health-wise, Lord. We pray for those that are in isolation. We pray for those that continue to, to serve on the front lines. We pray for the humble. We pray for, for Roy today, Lord who is a new type of first responder, a grocer, who every day selflessly serves so that we would have food for our tables. We pray for all of those working in the, the medical field, Lord, that you would keep them safe and that you would keep their hearts soft for this siege has gone on much longer than anyone expected. Help us be the light today. Help us have a word of encouragement, a word of of love for your glory and for your honor, Lord. We need you. We can't do it without you, Lord. We won't even try. In Jesus' name, amen. In your devotion today, ask God for his eyes to be able to perceive your life differently from this point forward, to recognize the blessings as blessings and not as curses, to recognize all that God has blessed you with and trust that he has so much more for you as you devote your life to him. And remember, number one, you can't take it with you. And number two, you can't hedge your bets. 
You're either all in with the world or you're all in with God. I love you. I will see you Sunday and back here Monday as we wrap up the Sermon on the Mount uh, through next week and then circle back for uh, the Lord's Prayer uh, the following week. So there's your roadmap. I will uh, continue to pray for you and miss you uh, and see you soon.